Yeah, these comments are for uh, Song Jae, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the seven step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. And I'm going to listen to your independent speaking practice test number 38. And today I wanted to kind of talk to you uh, at YouTube. I want to make this a little more personal. I know you have a lot of big goals and you really want to uh, get a high score. So you also gave me some comments after your practice test. So I wanted to be able to respond to some of what you're saying. So I think the question here is, when choosing university, what is the most important thing a person should consider? Give reasons and details to support your response. So you say... I think the most important thing an individual should consider when choosing a college is if the courses he or she is taking are aligned with their biorhythm. This is such a critical... No, that is interesting. Boy, what an inter... Uh, th that, that's got to be the most unusual topic statement I have ever heard. So I'm very curious. I'm curious to see how you're going to develop this response. Point for a person like me because I'm a night owl, and I would now I'm a night owl. Using a night owl, that's very automatic, natural type language. A lot of international students would not know that expression, and you do, and that shows you have very high English language abilities. And I really struggled with getting up early in the morning. And it would really interfere with my studies if I had to um, get up at 7 in the morning to go to school. Okay. I'm really grateful that I'm an evening student. Also, I find that I can concentrate better in the evening. Okay, that was not so good. You kind of ran out of time at the end there. You didn't really support that. So the main thing is, is you're choosing a university that, re that has English or evening classes because that best represents your own body's, what you call biorhythm. You see what I'm saying? So you, you kind of ran out a little bit at the end there. You didn't really support that last point. You ran out of time, so... But still, very good control of your delivery. You have very natural sounding intonation. You didn't really have any major problems pronouncing any of the words in there. And I like your pacing. Uh, language use, pretty good control again. I think of your vocabulary and your grammar. Topic development was, was pretty good, but you, you kind of ran out of time at the end there. So that was a little bit kind of uh, unusual. Not unusual, but it was awkward. Awkward is a better word. So it was awkward kind of how you ended your response. So that, that was really the main issue is how you ended it. So uh, I'm still going to put you between about 24 to 26 points out of 30. Just be careful. Make sure that you can manage your time effectively. All right, so let's keep going. I think you're going to talk to me a little bit more here. Hi, Michael. This is Sung Jay. How's it going? Um, and I just wanted to respond okay. to your message the last time you read into my um, speech. Right, so I, I said something about that you're probably looking to score over 110 on the TOEFL IBT exam, at least based on your speaking abilities. My goal is, yes, it's... Um, well, I, I, I should say it was originally um, getting over 110. Okay. But then I kind of changed my mind because I I find that I'm really struggling with preparing for the TOEFL, especially um, with the TOEFL speaking section. Okay. One thing I really wanted to um, tell you about and also get some... Um, advice on okay. is the fact that I really um, struggle with coming up with um, coming up with a couple of key keywords to build my speech around. Okay. And that's important, especially for the independent speaking tasks. 
The integrated ones, you can build your response from your notes, and your notes come from the reading and the listening passages, but for the independent speaking task, you definitely need to be innovative. You need to be imaginative. You have to be able to come up with creative ideas. The last response you did wasn't... You, you had one key point, I think, which was good about how taking evening classes are important and you want to choose a university that offers evening classes, but you didn't really have another point there. Now, those recordings, the, the past recordings that I uploaded are um, recordings of me giving the same kind of response over and over again. So I had practiced giving the same answer over and over again before finally uploading it. Yeah. That's okay. A lot of my students do that. I know that you cannot do that during the TOEFL exam, but I think over the next month or so, if you practice and get your responses down and then you, you give them, I, I think that's going to be very helpful. So what you want to try to do is eventually reduce your amount of preparation to about 20 or 15 seconds and then that realistically uh, simulates what you're doing during the TOEFL speaking section. And so that's that's the area I am having most difficulty with at the moment and I wanted to know uh, what you what you will have to say about that. Okay. Because um, if you could direct me to uh, uh, you know, some of your lesson pages where I can uh, get some help with coming up with um, quick little keywords, or I can learn some ways of thinking of, you know, what to say um, in just 15 seconds of time. That'd be really great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And I do have a couple of lessons I think you might be interested in. So go to my online TOEFL course right now, Song J, and let's go over to the speaking section. So I'll show you a couple of things that I think might be helpful for you right now. So you're going to step seven. This is the seventh step of my online TOEFL course. And let's take a look here. So. I think uh, the lesson number one, the pair choice independent speaking task, I think that would be a great lesson for you right now. Uh, also, lesson number two, free choice independent speaking task, that's also a good lesson to kind of get you going. Now, you also know that uh, if you go to the speaking part of my course, if you kind of scroll down, right after independent speaking practice says 30, I have 300 additional topics that you can start practicing and that also will help you with your brainstorming right now for for me you can post one practice test each day and I will give you feedback each day on that but you can also post additional practice tests or you can practice them in your own time and I have 300 topics and I'm telling you if you can practice these 300 topics that's going to give you pretty much every possible type of question that you might get during the speaking. So you kind of get used to that. But this is probably not enough. So you, you need to be a little more creative, right? So my recommendation also is to continue to get a lot of exposure to English. That means reading newspapers. That means going to social media. If you want to check the news at social media, you might have a Facebook or Instagram page. You can go there, get information there. Uh, also watch TV. And you can focus on news, documentary history, and also science programs. And I think a combination of continuing to get exposure to English through both reading and listening practice, and then also doing speaking lesson number one and two, and also by practicing the 300 additional topics at my website, and then posting things for me each day, you'll get better. And, and don't worry right now if you feel like you do have to practice uh, the practice tests over and over and over before you post them. Uh, I had a student uh, about a year ago, Sunjay, and she did that. In fact, she spent about 40 minutes before she posted a speaking practice test at my website every day. 
she did this for two and a half months. She would brainstorm, write down all the ideas. She would write the whole thing, correct all the grammar, make sure vocabulary was good. She made sure it was super organized. She did this over and over and over for two and a half months. You know what happened? She took the TOEFL test and got 28 on, uh, on the speaking. That's exactly what happened. So even though she was taking so much time, she was learning English in the process. She was improving her vocabulary. She was improving her grammar. And by practicing the practices over and over and over, she was improving her pronunciation. No joke. And she got 28 on the speaking. You, my friend, can get 30 on the speaking. I feel comfortable because you already speak a lot more clearly than what she did and you didn't you have fewer problems almost no problems with language use that's why I'm saying I'm comfortable with your practicing right now I wouldn't worry about it too much eventually right before you take the TOEFL you can reduce the amount of your preparation to maybe 15 or 20 seconds but I'm telling you eventually this will become natural and automatic to you and you will be able to post very strong coherently organized and develop responses with good language use and good topic development you will be able to do this I'm not kidding you alright so I hope I've given you some good information uh, in the video and by the way if you know anybody who's interested in studying the TOEFL, uh, tell them about my online course I don't advertise at all right I just use YouTube and I I deal with my students at my website, that's pretty much it. And then I teach here at California State University, San Bernardino, which is where I am right now. Alright, anyway, have a great day and it's a pleasure to have you as one of my students.